since you asked me for the greatest story ever told, I will by all means tell you once again the one about Treasure Island from series one. <laughs> what? Even greater than that? You stretch my resources. But there is one story of when I was a young man, very young man, when I was known as Finnemore of Nazareth. <laughs> A really very young man indeed. <laughs> I was working, you see, as senior advisor to Emperor Caesar Augustus. Good morning, O oh great Caesar Augustus, fount of all wisdom, master of my destiny, before whom I am as the wheat beneath the side. Yes, yes, never mind that. Look, I've decided to make a decree about tax. Oh, yes. What's the plan? I'm going to tax all the world. <laughs> all the world? Yes. Ambitious. Well, you know me, think big. Also, I think we'll get more money that way. <laughs> Great Caesar's logic is flawless. I will announce the decree. Yes, I, no, I also thought, let's say everyone has to go back to the city they were born in. Why? It'll just make things easier, I think. It'll make things easier if everyone in the world is forced to travel simultaneously whilst doing their tax return. <laughs> Yes, I think so. Why? Do you have a better idea? We could just tax them where they live now. Ah, no, I don't think that would work. Uh, besides, my plan will stimulate the economy. I think of all the money innkeepers will make, for instance. Yes. As it happens, O Caesar, I myself keep a small inn in Nazareth. Oh, there you are then, Kerching. Yeah, although I was born in Bethlehem. Off you go then. <laughs> And so I boarded up my inn and began the long journey to my hometown. And on that journey, down that dusty road, a humble donkey watched me go on my massive luxury horse. <laughs> on arrival, I made my way straight to the inn. Excuse me, do you have a room for tonight? Oh, um, uh, do we have a room, Hannah? Oh, not tonight. I'm sorry, sir. There's no room for you at the inn. No room? Why is the little town of Bethlehem so busy? Well, this taxing, of course. Yes, yes, and also the hopes and fears of all the years are met in us tonight. <laughs> oh, I see a convention. <laughs> you really don't have any room at all? Well, no, single room, no. No single room, all we have left is a family room, sir. Yeah, oh, fine, I'll take that. Well, it's a bit peak for one person, sir. A large double bed and a cot. I don't mind. I like to spread out. Besides, the, uh, the cot will be a useful place to keep my suitcase. Oh, hello. No, I'm sorry. We've just filled our last room. And so I went to bed. <laughs> with the satisfaction of a job well done. But within the hour, I was awoken and forced to go and find the innkeeper. Excuse me, could you please turn that light out? Light, sir? Yes. I don't like to complain, but it's been a long journey to Bethlehem, and I was enjoying a deep and dreamless sleep, and now suddenly, the dark streets shineth with everlasting light. <laughs> what is more, it seems to be positioned so that it shines directly into my window, right onto my suitcase stand. <laughs> and also, while I have to admit that your local choir is excellent, is one o'clock in the morning really the right time for choir practice? <laughs> the innkeeper promised to see what he could do, and I returned to bed, but before long... Excuse me, why is your inn suddenly full of sheep? Oh, they've got in, have they? Yes, they have. What are they doing here? Well, the shepherds bought them. It's been a bit of a funny night. Yeah, the see? shepherds, yes, the shepherds can shut up as well. Oh, dear, are they singing bawdy shepherding songs? No, no, they are glorifying and praising God for all the things that they have heard and seen. But they are doing it really loudly. Well, I'm sorry you've been disturbed. I'll have a word with them, but it's been quite an unusual night, you see. I don't want to hear excuses. I just want to be left to sleep in heavenly peace. Fair enough, sir. Good night. But within the hour, I was up again. What is it now? And I'm a little bit busy trying to find swaddling clothes. No, look here. I tolerated the light and the choir and the shepherds. I even tolerated all those regal fanfares that started half an hour ago. But this is the final straw. There is a little boy standing directly below my window, literally playing a drum. <laughs> it's four o'clock in the morning. I do not want to hear a oh, rum pum pum pum. A oh, rum pum pum pum. A rum pum pum pum. 
I don't know where he even found the drum that could make that noise. <laughs> I understand, sir, but you see, something incredible I don't care. Happened. I don't want to hear about it. All I want you to do is to do something about that boy, him and his drum. Otherwise, I will have no choice but to give this establishment an extremely poor review on Rate My Inn. What's that? It's a scroll of parchment about inns, which I compile, and then go round reading out to people. Oh, well, in that case, I'm sure there's something we can do. And so it came to pass that when I left Bethlehem, I made known abroad all that I had seen, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by Finnemore. <laughs> Namely, that if you make enough fuss, there's an inn in Bethlehem that'll knock 25% off the bill. <laughs> that surely is the greatest story ever told. Good night. <laughs>